Good evening. We are so delighted that you could join us for our program Around the World and at Home, featuring our special guests, Susanna Salk and Stacy Bukas. Programs at the library are made possible by contributions to the annual library, Friends of the Library campaign. We are thankful for the continued support to make our collections and programs available to the community. My name is Pat Tone, and I am head of reader services here at the library. My colleague, Diane Young, who is our in-house design consultant, is a big fan of Stacy's designer blog, Quintessence. So she thought it would be a great idea to invite Stacy and Susanna to the library to share their uh, design insights with us at, in the community. Stacy's love of design led her to the creation of Quintessence, an award-winning lifestyle blog. Susanna is a best-selling design author and stylist, and you can find her books right here at the library, so check them out. Together, Stacy and Susanna have collaborated on their At Home with Video series, which takes viewers around the world uh, with leading designers from around the globe. Please join me in welcoming Stacy and Susanna tonight. Good, I'm terrible with names. Um, thank you all for coming. So happy to be here at my own library. Um, uh, and uh, on this, thank God, the weather held out. Oh, hey, <laughs> I see some. I see some familiar she faces. Lives like five minutes away from here. <laughs> oh, thank you. Some familiar uh, faces in the crowd. Um, but anyway, we thought we'd start out, Suzanne and I, by playing you. Some of you who are uh, followers will recognize this little video recap we did recently. But if you're new to our series... How many of you have watched even one episode before? Oh, great. Okay, wonderful. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, but it's fun. We, we always try to update the recap. So this will give you a sense of the vibe of the series, some of our past and future visits, just little clips. We yeah, you get some nice... sneak peek of yeah, some exactly. videos we haven't published yet. Uh, so here we go. Yep. I guess I just hit. Yep, just hit play, I think. So that gives you a little idea of some of the people we've filmed, some of the places we've been. We've done about 
in the five years that we've started it, mm -hmm. we've done almost a hundred videos. And actually looking at that, I was kind of like, oh my <laughs> God, we've really been a lot of places. Uh, a lot of amazing designers yeah. have opened their doors to us and we feel um, continually yes. inspired and so grateful and it is so much fun. So we just wanted to take you behind the scenes of some of those places that we've been to, you know, been to and kind of some behind the scenes. Let me just bring up the presentation. Um, one, of the, one of the last lines of the recap says, giving design a voice. And that's kind of where it all starts. Stacy obviously um, has this amazing design blog. Uh, so she was already firmly entrenched in the world of design and knew a lot of these designers. And I, as, did you. as a book author, I and um, I worked at House and Garden Magazine and El Decor, so I knew a lot of them too through interviewing them or being at their houses or using their photos. So we had the trust of them, and I saw that she had done a little movie on Dominique Browning, my former editor at House and Garden, on her blog one day, and then I happened to see her <coughs> that weekend at a book signing in Connecticut. And Susanna lives in Connecticut, too. Just I live further. in Connecticut, too, in Litchfield County. And I don't know what made me sort of all the parts kind of came together, but I thought, what if, since she knows how to do the technical work of the actual movies, which is hard. I mean, she's spent a lot of time at the Apple Store learning Final Cut, et cetera. What if we showed everyone how great these designers were, how funny, how fearless, because we got to hear them, and, and you all mostly just get to see their work two-dimensionally on a magazine, right, or in a book. But there's so much more to it than that. And of course, half the time you're seeing their projects for somebody else. There's nothing more exciting to me than to see a designer's own home and see what choices they've made in their gardens, in their, in their bedrooms, et cetera. Well, actually, uh, interestingly enough, when we started the series, we started it as a shopping series. Right. It was stylish shopping with and we would go shopping with different designers. And we did a few of those. And then we did an at home with, and that took off like wildfire. Right. And we thought, okay, so that's what they want. And by the way, the videos are about eight to 10 minutes. Stacy launches them through her blog Quintessence, but then we started a YouTube channel where the videos go to also. So suddenly we started to get feedback on the comments on the YouTube channel from all over the world. We're watching in Brazil, we're watching in Greenwich, we're watching in New York. And we sort of all of a sudden said, you know what, we're on to something. We better start doing this fast and get put, sort of put our stake in the sand as they, as it were to mm -hmm. get a body of work to create a series before anyone else did it. <laughs> um, but it takes a lot of work. And, and we also were lucky enough that we didn't work full time at a magazine or somewhere we could devote the time. It's a lot of work. You know, we're producers at, we do it all just ourselves. People oh, expect and big. Actually, that's a funny story. Yeah. Um, and actually a dear story about our recently departed friend, Maria Boada, who was one of our earlier videos who we shot in the Cowton and Tout showroom. And we had set up the, um, set up the shoot and all of a sudden I get a phone call from Mario. He's like, oh my God, they want all the paperwork for the, um, the crew for the crew, crew and the machinery and, and insurance. And insurance. I said, Mario, I said, my camera fits in my purse. Yeah, I said, it's just, it's just the two of us. And they're like, it's just you guys. And we get so much more done when it's just us. Uh, that's why we people say, well, why don't you make this bigger or have more people? No, yeah. it's so much better because we work very efficiently together. Neither of us procrastinate, and we also love doing it. Um, but it is funny how fast we work because all these designers are so busy. And if you tell them that it's a three-day shoot, you're just never going to get them. Yeah, so you have to say we're in and out in two hours. And it's funny, Timothy Corrigan's chateau, so we went to France to do his first chateau. We're doing the second, capturing his new one that he since sold this and, and has a huge renovation project and a new one, which you saw quickly in that video. But we arrived there. We had a day with him to create this video, and we were just having so much fun. I mean, you're in this 100-room chateau. It was incredible. You're having the best time, and you're always jet-lagged, which you forget about. And we were drinking a lot of champagne. We were drinking champagne, and all of a sudden, we were. I was like, we have to film this, <laughs> We guys. haven't done anything. Like, we got to get going. I'm always the bad cop on that. And so um, you get to a place, and you have to think, either you know the designer well already, and you've seen their house, or sometimes you don't know them at all, and what's the vibe, and 
what are you going to capture and relay to people? And we've learned now you also have to get extra stuff. We call it B-roll, B -roll. right? You have to get an approach. You have to, how's the video going to end? Um, don't do, we've learned very soon, don't do the talking heads sitting on a sofa, blah, 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 blah. So no matter how charismatic the person is, the energy just dies. Drops. So, you so have to, we've yeah. now learned as soon as we go to a place, we sort of walk through, we assess it, we decide what we're doing. Susanna says, okay, we're doing this question in this room, we're doing this question and in this like room. We're like one take. Yep, yeah, one take. One take wonder. Yeah, we have to do one takes because it does, it's amazing how these people, they give talks around the world. They're incredibly articulate mm -hmm. and energetic and they're used to doing all this. And it's funny, a lot of them, they'll tell you something, like you'll go into their dining room and they'll say, and it's funny, they're all so like nervous that their house isn't good enough. They're like, all the things are so great. I'm like, trust me, your we castle just got, is fine. I won't tell you. I won't <laughs> won't tell you who it is, but we're going out um, next month to LA to do several shoots. And one of the people when we were going back and forth emailing said, Oh, I just binge watched all the videos. She said, You sure you want to do my house? We're talking about a major designer. <laughs> Well, because she had sort of a, uh, actually, it is a cute little small house in Santa yep. Barbara in this historic home. Well, now you'll know who it is, but. But but she also has a beautiful house in, in L.A. In, in L.A. in Bel Air. But she was the one that originally said the L.A. house is a little dark. Come to Santa Barbara, which we thought would be really fun. We're going to take yeah. the train there and make yeah, it a whole do the kind whole of thing. journey. But then I got an email from her three days ago and she was like, you know what? Now I've watched them all and I don't want you guys to come to Santa Barbara. I feel nervous. I think you're better in LA. And I was like, we we've already that. bought our train tickets. Yeah, we can't We're do it. But that's, it's funny how nervous they all get that theirs isn't worthy. You just yeah. can't even believe it. But, um, okay. So on the castle, as an example about the actual tackling of the shoot, when we got to Timothy's new castle that you'll see a picture in here, but the Chateau, <coughs> It's like you get there and there's a hundred rooms plus the grounds. And, and so he's so excited. It was cute. He, he was like, let's go through it all. And I'll just tell you all. Like I said, wait a minute, you guys. Stop. You know how you get tired doing your hair dryer? You should try it with a video camera. Right. I said, yeah. but also when the camera is on, that's when everyone's like, they just tell you everything. It's funny. They've got all these great stories. And then you say, okay, stop. Let's now film. And they're like this. I can't tell you how many times that's happened. So, so now we've learned, don't say anything until we're rolling. We want it to feel like a discovery process, just the way it feels like when you go to a friend's house and you're like, where'd you get this? What are you doing here? It has to feel like that. And it was funny. It took us three hours to walk through that chateau in the grounds. And we got at the end and we filmed along the we way. We went up and back in one day. And Timothy was like, thank God. <laughs> we did, like I said, you, it was four o'clock. I'm like, can you imagine if we were just starting over now with the formulated you know, planned mm -hmm. room by room. So you have to kind of move quickly on your feet. So there's Timothy's new chateau that he's renovating from scratch. It's incredible. If you haven't seen that video, We've I highly recommend. We've never done it before. Yeah. But we saw him in Nashville two years ago when we were at the show. Yeah, we were show, speaking at the antique like, show there. I have, I sold the other chateau, everything in it. He <laughs> loves the process. I bought a new old That old chateau, chateau had 17 bedrooms. Um, and he was like, come and capture the before and everyone, it's, it's really fun to see. And, and his, his energy and his intelligence and his commitment is very infectious. He's super, super knowledgeable about French history, French decorative arts. I mean, here's some of the, how the rooms look now. And that's all original 18th century giving design a voice. Um, so it's been, I know all of you, I'm sure are familiar with Bunny Williams and John Rosselli. Um, it's fun. Sometimes it's all different kinds of people, right? You'll have a couple, mm -hmm. you'll have one person. That's actually have, pretty rare. <laughs> right. The couples. Yes, yeah. that's true. We had Roman and Williams. Yeah. Um, and that's fun. That's a picture that Stacy took for our dog book. Have ever you see the at home with dogs and designers that came out last year? Um, Stacy was the photographer. Most and, of it. Most and it was really fun because often what we'll do, there's so much cross pollination now in what we're doing it in the world of design, like anything with creativity, we'll be there shooting for the dog book, but then we also did an at-home with video. So sometimes we'll do two things on the same day. And sometimes that's hard. And sometimes that's hard, it's tiring. And we're going to London uh, to Again. shoot the sequel. It's gonna be at home with dogs and their designers in the English countryside. So we did the first half of the shoot this past September. 
and we're going back in May to do some of the more garden-centric homes. And then we sort of think, okay, who should we try to hit up for an at-home with? <laughs> because you want it, you got it. I'm like, we have and, every month, we have to like keep thinking of what. I can't even tell Well, uh, later on, I'll tell you what that trip was like. Um, Budding in John's pool, which was so. An incredible that, pool house. We did a video just of the pool house. Um, and why don't you just quickly say like where she took her inspiration from. It so obviously a, it's based on a Greek temple. You know, and um, what you can see is that within uh, the top pediment, you know, that triangular area, that's all pine cones. It's really fantastic. It's very rustic based on a much, it's based on, you know, this is a very, actually, a, you know, it's always a great design uh, combination when you mix something rustic with something mm -hmm. formal. And that's, this is a perfect example, you know, a very formal Greek architecture with a total rustic application. And inside is a great living space with a fireplace. And what's interesting, I recommend you all Googling this, is so we did Richard Shapiro. Has anyone seen the Richard Shapiro house in LA? That is one of the most famous pool houses in the world. I mean, you would die. It's in, uh, there are no words. <laughs> There's no words. I think in the recap, you see me walking by a really large red modern sculpture with all these boxwood. He has thousands of rolling boxwood. He has one of the most stunning pool houses you've ever seen. It's like out of a dream. And he also based mm -hmm. his pool house on... Well, his is more um, Italian. His is more Palladio, but very similar concept. Right, exactly. So it's just sort of fun to educate yourself on history and the fearlessness of what other people do about what they do. And it's so impressive that they, they don't take it so seriously, but they take... Richard's kind of serious. Seriously. Richard's kind of serious. <laughs> but... What I'm saying is they're not precious about it. No, absolutely. They're not, oh, don't touch this, or careful, that was really right. expensive. Yeah, and, no, never. I mean, we were going things in Richard's garden that were from like the first century. Not to mention, I don't know how many of you out here are. Oh, oops, here are, it is. Oh, and that's here why it we put together. <laughs> look at, have you guys seen this? I mean, go and look at the Richard Shapiro video because we spent a lot of time out in this whole extraordinary it's backyard. This is right in LA, right in the city. And it's all new, and he did 50 million tricks to make it look old. And um, any of you who are gardening people might know that very famous boxwood garden in France. Um, I can't remember. It begins with an M. I can't remember what it's called. But he based his garden in LA on that. It's just mounds and mounds of like undulating waves. boxwoods. And he, and he, um, he clips them. He clips himself. them every day. Thank you. <laughs> what I was doing when I did that. Sometimes we don't even need to talk. But that's what I love about people like Richard and these designers is he thats he loves doing that. That's very zen for him. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you literally go down Santa Monica Boulevard and you make a left and then there's all these houses and you just knock on this door and then there's this Shangri-La of incredibleness. Definitely watch that video if you haven't yeah, yet. Yeah, it's great. And by the way, you can see it on YouTube, but if you do the quintessence Richard Shapiro, you'll get the blog. And the blog post that Stacy does has the video, but some written information. And so usually some extra pictures. You can see extra like pictures, and you can really learn about it. So it's just sort of a nice kind of companion piece. Oh, we had there all of this. Is. Can you guys believe this? Can you it's, believe it, it? I can't even tell you. It's incredible. And so what he did underneath all that boxwood, he did faux elevation. So it looks like it's, you know, Oh, undulating. I didn't know that. Okay. He actually says it in the video. <laughs> he said that to me? Yeah. Okay. All right. But, um, anyway, so. I, I was listening. I, yeah, yeah. No, but there's an entire, like, faux structure underneath to make it look like that. Got it. And what you don't see in this picture is interspersed throughout the Boxwood Garden are his own sculptures. Yeah. The guy also is a sculptor. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, things from the first century. It's crazy. Because he's also an antique stealer. One of our favorite people in the world, Alex Papa Christidis, designer Alex. This is his Hamptons house. Okay, speaking of art. So, they have an entire sculpture garden. Um, any of you who are um, serious art aficionados will know that that's a Lalonde sculpture. What they have to do to prepare the ground for these sculptures is actually amazing. They have to do an entire underground, um, you know, I 
can't hear what just people are saying. Just do this and yeah. everyone knows yeah, what yeah. you mean. Yeah, you know it was like right. this. Yeah. But that. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, so that, you know, when it rains, the sculpture doesn't sink into the ground. And then what they do is they make a giant, you know what a maquette is? A maquette is like a... Yeah, the model. Yeah, which I like never thought of. Because, of course, you don't just want to... You, you got to know oh, where the thing there. is going to go. I want that right, $50,000 right. sculpture there. Right. You have to like check. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so they, they make a maquette of the sculpture, you know, like a giant cardboard likeness, and they carry it around. What's the, And it was fun. This like video. Like you do with your paint swatches on your wall. <laughs> we did like a whole weekend there. So he, we have a little clip of him and I playing tennis and then walking by the sculptures. One thing I wanted to say about what you were saying about the preparation, you learn so much from these designers about artisanship, mm -hmm. craftsmanship, and how much they support artisans through Absolutely. their work if you think about it especially um, someone like alex he's like he's there's me resting and that's teddy that dog is goes everywhere with he alex. was just in paris with him i mean literally everywhere um i actually have um eaten with him at what's that famous restaurant in paris um you well, know. He, he was staying wasn't he staying at the ritz with, with oh, yeah, teddy? He stays yeah. at the ritz with alex um he um got special dispensation to go into the louis vuitton gigantic museum as a a dog um, and he sort of is he loves him but it's, he's 13 years old we do mm -hmm. yeah and we and then we just did so this was a video we did um, a, few years of, ago. a few years ago we've done the setting a table with Alice because he's obsessed with tabletop and mm -hmm. that's been sort of a new spin-off series yeah and so we were just there a couple of weeks ago um, a couple of months ago in the holidays, the, yeah. the holidays we did uh, of Alex just talking about uh, his love for tabletop and setting the table so and he has a new company now um, so it's really fun to just be with him and his energy. It's so funny. He and I went to the beach, which is right near his house. And I love being outside in nature. And it was a little windy. And I could tell he was sort of like wanting to be back in the house. And he called his house person. He was like, could you? I, I was like, Alex, it's three blocks. We can walk right back to your house. And he was like, OK. And then he was like, Andre, could you come pick Susanna and I up? <laughs> I'm like, I'm fine. And then it was fun that we had a whole dinner and Stacy filmed it. It's yeah. it's it's that it's really fun. fun. Chris Bitzmuller, many of you probably know his ceramics. He's a famous ceramicist. His lamps, you any beautiful house, I would say probably including has, the president. Well, not this president, but but had Christopher Spitzmuller lamps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The current president does not have Christopher Spitzmuller lamps, but you could. They're very recognizable. They're beautiful, and this is his weekend home in. Um, um, it's, it's up not, near. It's up near Millbrook. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, so we went for lunch. Poor Stacy never gets to eat. I feel so badly because- I'm always filming the eating. She's filming the eating, um, but it's really fun for us to have a meal so you can see some tabletop and, and see them kind of in situ entertaining. But you should follow Chris now. If any of you are on Instagram, you should follow Christopher Spitzmiller because what he's doing with his property is incredible. He's the male version of Martha. And by the way, his pool house. Oh, his so pool house is his amazing. His new pool house. Which he based on bunnies. Which he based on bunnies. See, it's fun to kind of start following connecting them and the sort dots. of seeing, connecting the dots. His pool house has hundreds and hundreds of uh, horns, antler horns. Antlers. So they're, all, they're all, um, what do you, there's a word for it, you know, a fallow or something where they're, you know, they're on the ground. They didn't kill anything So for it. structurally it looks like bunnies, but then he kind of kept going and going. And, and um, it's black. It's all black. And his, uh, his garden, I mean, it's incredible. But what I was obsessed about was how he created this outdoor area and the colorations. You would never think in your patio to do that kind of purple with the darker purple. And um, he said about that, that those pieces, he, I said, where did you get this collection? Like, so he was like, I didn't get a collection. I found one piece mm -hmm. and I became obsessed and I just worked away on eBay until I got the other chairs. And then I took the fabric and that, you know, it's And a then lot he had work. them painted. I mean, he was really committed. And, the, and you'd be surprised what a source eBay is for so many of these designers. Yes. And Etsy. Yes. And, and mm -hmm. auctions. Mm -hmm. well, every auctions kind of auction. Sure. Not necessarily fancy auctions like Christie's and Sotheby's, but they work hard but, to do it. But some, but those auction houses, you can actually get incredible deals. When we filmed with Katie, <laughs> we filmed with Katie and Ritter and Peter Penoyer, it became actually a running joke because as we were going from room to room, I was to like, room, "Where'd so, you get this?" Yeah, and she was like, "At auction." And I was like, "Please don't tell me you got this at auction. Uh, at it's auction. so annoying." But it's so smart because it's one of a kind. She got a great, you know, great prices on yeah. it, and and she was very smart especially about that. the things like. A lot of people don't want anymore, like Irish Georgian furniture, you know, the brown furniture. Right, but they know how to mix it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's Chris's, one of Chris's bedrooms. Uh, what I think is so amazing about this is how um, 
there's so many ideas in every picture. So you may not love red, white, and blue, or this may not be for you, but there's something to take from every image as an idea to translate into your own home, whether it's a condo, whether it's a country house, whether you live in the city. And by that, I mean, if you respond in some way positively to this and you get a sort of your heart flutters a little bit, think about what is it? Is it the glossiness of that blue floor? Is it the fabulous Hinson fireworks wallpaper? And uh, maybe you have one of those difficult rooms at home that has the slanted ceiling on the third floor. Why not? do a wallpaper treatment on all of it. You know, designers say the smaller, more difficult the room, amp it up, have fun with it. Don't try to negate it and cancel it out. Um, pack it full of fun stuff. Yeah. Oh, and there's one of Christopher's lamps, obviously. Of but course. that will show you. And I love that thought. he did that little bench. So that's, uh, he painted the bench white. Clearly it was a brown furniture bench and then upholstered it with patent leather. Which Huge was, idea there. Hello. Oh. So we went to Lake Como, that was, this was great. We got to um, capture the head of Promemoria, which is an international furniture company, his home on Lake Como. So we were there for three days. We had to capture the workshop and the house and- Oh, it was we so awful. It was awful. <laughs> but you know what you forget? What you forget is jet lag. Oh, sure, that sounds great. Well, and then you get there and you're like, I mean, you all have had jet lag, right? Where you just feel like throwing up, like you're so, tired, reverse, you know, going that way. And you've got a whole day of filming ahead. And what is so funny is I had met him before on uh, a it's trip two years ago. one of the most incredible ago. gardens. <laughs> the gardens are incredible. Another person who loves purple, by the way. Yes. Um, by the way, if you've been to Lake Como, you'll, you might've remembered that there's a public path that goes kind of around above. Oh, yeah, near the water. That's a high elevated. His property, which no one sees, is all <laughs> underneath like two acres of gardens. I mean, it's incredible. So we were down there on the most perfect day and everyone's walking above us, not knowing. And I think I, I almost kind of started crying a little bit. <laughs> I mean, it was like every flower was open. It was just the most. Yeah. And then Stacy and I give each other a look like, can you believe that we're here? And she's trying to capture things both on her camera and, you know, yeah, still that's shots sometimes too. challenging. But the funny thing about it is that I had forgotten. I didn't have a lot of interaction with him two years before we went on the trip. I didn't really remember. He speaks, you think, oh, Europeans were all spoiled. If they're a well-traveled, successful European, they probably know English. Nothing. No English. He spoke no English. I don't this know why was they didn't problem. tell us that. What did they, what did they think we were going to do? Because they had flown us over to right, do this, to do this video. And then the other thing was, he was also, I can say this because he'll never, none of you hopefully will ever tell him this if you run into him. <laughs> He was horrible on camera. Awful. He froze. So he looks great, but at first- And he's charming. He's super charming. Oh, so charming. He's like, ha, ah, yeah. like, Always smiling. Always smiling. And so our expectations, first I was like, okay, Romeo, we're going to have you come in here. Let's get you in the garden. I'm going to pause. And can you just tell me a little bit about how you created these boxwoods? And, like, and then yes. we'll move over and he'll go, uh huh, uh huh. And then we put the thing on and nothing came out. <laughs> And so then no, the I, funniest one, the funniest, oh, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. no, go ahead. So the funniest one was we're in his bedroom, which was really pretty spectacular. It had these frescoed ceilings and he had books everywhere. And overlooked and, the, Yeah, and overlooked the lake. And all we wanted him to do was to fun. sit on this chair and say, I love my books. I love my, we, could, we couldn't even get him to say that. Right, at first it was like, let's talk. And I looked at Stacey you know, and I was like, you know what? Just say when I say it, I love my books. <laughs> And then I said to Stacey, then we went to like, let's just get us walking by the books. <laughs> like, let's just go to that. And then I looked at her and I was like, this is what it's going to be about. We're just going to get thing all like B-roll of him smiling. He cannot talk. But this is the views that he had privately. It was the most incredible place. And even his factory was incredible. Even his factory was incredible. Yeah. Caroline Rome is such a dear friend and we've, we've um, done quite a few videos with her. She lives very near me in Connecticut, her famous house in Weatherstone. And there, we also were very lucky to get her house in Charleston. Um, that took a long time to get it. I think we're, we are the only capture of that video or images really, except yeah. for her own images of that house. One thing I wanted to say about Caroline, oh, we just did a recent video with her about her book about fashion. Mm -hmm. So it was fun, she asked us to come and do a little thing about how her clothes when she was a fashion designer in the 80s has sort of influenced her design. And this is really what you realize is 
and Caroline takes it to the nth degree. Yeah, she's really incredibly talented. She started out as a fashion designer. Then she got into flowers and arranging. And then she thought she'd take up photography. So then she did a book of her own photographs of her own floral arrangements. And then she took up painting next time we went there. So then she showed us the paintings, the watercolors, which were incredible. They're incredible. Her botanicals. Of her flowers. And, um, she does it all. She can cook. She, and then when we were last there, I think you saw in the end of the recap where we're laughing over wine, she was like, oh, let me show you what I've been doing now. Someone approached her about having a wine. So this, this count in Italy. Mm -hmm. And um, is it her name on it? Yes. It's yeah, her, it's, it's her. And she did the whole label. And then, of it's course, beautiful. she did the label. She drew the label. She made, she, you know, it's sort of, she really walks the walk as far as investing her creativity in so many and she's really elements. in the dirt you know people remember There's her from the house. 80s and all those lavish parties believe me we were in the shed and you could see her plans yeah. I mean, for the following amazing. year of what she was ordering the bulbs i mean she she's not just giving orders about put the daffodils over there she knows exactly yep. what she wants and she's you know very much in the trenches yep. that's her amazing greenhouse with all the white geraniums she did an entire baccarat you know the crystal the french crystal company asked her to do a campaign with them. And they brought in like a 300 pound crystal chandelier and hung it in her greenhouse. In that greenhouse for the shoot. It's, oops, sorry, it's so beautiful. And then we had lunch. Stacy did get to eat this lunch, she did. Um, but that's her amazing porch. And, and, and again, she doesn't just, many, most of these designers, that's not just pretending for us. Yeah, that's how they live. That's how they live. And they very that's much believe in that. That's why we started the Setting the Table series. That's her bedroom in Charleston. Now. Wait, this is the guest bedroom, right? Uh huh. That's not even her bedroom. Now uh -huh. I don't remember what the master bedroom looked because I was so obsessed with this bedroom. Was it the purple bedroom? I think it was the purple bedroom. Yeah, we didn't love that favorite. so much. Um, but this, um, interestingly enough, so Caroline had always wanted to use this fabric. This is a very, very famous Pierre Frey. Tree of Life. Tree of Life uh, fabric from Brockenier, and, um, which is a historic, Brockenier is the company that um, Marie Antoinette worked with. And, um, um, Hubert Givenchy had very famously used this fabric in his country house. And, and you will, as the way that I hope you will be inspired and take little bits for yourself, you're not going to get probably the, you, very few people <laughs> have doing this. this probably. But there may be, maybe you just say, I would love to put on my bed the, the, the red and the whites and the, cre you know, I want to have a lot of pattern in my bedroom. There's always something to take just the way that when we were in Carolyn's Charleston living room, remember she said, okay, yep. these things over the fireplace? Yep. I was inspired by my trip to London recently and I saw X, Y, Z. You know, they're doing the same mm -hmm. thing at their at their kind of level. Yep. Aaron Lauder's house in the Hamptons. That was fun. All those hats, a lot of them are from her grandmother. Estee Lauder. Who had the house before Aaron. That's yes. her entrance. That's the entrance to the house. Her That's dining her room, which is so great. I love asking people, why did you, what, why blue? How did you get that blue? And there's always an interesting story. A great designer or style maker or someone who has a wonderful house, you should be able to, and I would challenge you all to do this in your own houses. Every piece in every room, it doesn't have to be fancy, should have a story behind it. If you do not love it, give it to someone. Get, get it out of there. It's just... Life is too short, and I know everyone's talking about the series, Does It Bring You Joy? I'm telling you, it's the best way to live. And, and once you challenge yourself and start doing that, what's the, what's the story behind this? And is it a story that makes me happy? You will bring that to even your own bathrooms. I mean, it's not just the grand public areas. It should be in your mudroom. Is everything in your mudroom something that you use every day or seasonally or something that you love? And it should have a fun story behind it. It shouldn't just be saved for the, you know, the, the big formal rooms. There should be no formal rooms. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Um, well, not it can be formal as formal. long as you're using it. Yes, exactly. That's right. what I meant. Um, we never ate this lunch. This was all for that show. Was a, that was a fake lunch. <laughs> that was all for show. I was so hungry. And I would like to add that I was a little jealous because Erin, she's so beautiful and she always looks very pared down, like she's not wearing any makeup. I, of course, was like, oh, my God, I'm putting on so much makeup. She had her own makeup person there. And hair. And hair. And they were kind of always in the background. Following her around. And I kept thinking, like, can That's I have That's not your fair. Yeah, I was like, can I have your people, too? Like, we're in this together. But she never said anything. So no. 
we would stop and then they would and I would like be saying I'm like feel free if, you, if anyone wants to make it so that we're like even a little bit no it didn't happen no. so now we're in Ojai California this is one of the most beautiful properties uh, if any of you follow, and, and I highly recommend, if, if you like any of these, just if you're on Instagram, follow them. This is uh, Velvet. Uh, Velvet and Linen is Vel what her blog name is, and I think that's her <coughs> that's handle on, on Instagram. Brooke Instagram. and Steve Gianetti, they're both on Instagram. She's a designer. They're married. She's a designer. He's an architect. Oh, another couple. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they built this from scratch around that huge tree back there. And actually, their house a couple years ago, they could see the fires. Remember oh, yeah, the fires? So not from this year, but... The year before and they have a lot of animals they had to evacuate everything yeah I'll never forget I could see the fires where we had just filmed but they have the most adorable they have little goats they're so they have, cute they go I mean their house they they work there uh, they have their offices there she literally had them design I mean that's the benefit of having your spouse as an architect so where she in her office there's a glass wall where the goats come up and because she's like, we want to be near our animals. So she's typing There's, away on her computer. It's all immaculately clean. I don't know mm -hmm. how they do it all. They're, we never saw anyone working there. It's no. like they do everything. Mm -hmm. And they have these beautiful um, glass windows. And the goats come in from outside and sit there. I mean, it's very. They're not regular goats. They're like designer goats. They're adorable. <laughs> and this is the back part of the property. When we got there, is, did I include that? Oh, that's the kitchen. Oh, the kitchen is, uh, uh, that kitchen is fabulous. These people know what they're doing. Yeah, they do. OK. I'm not making, this was not staged, so because obviously they're in California, these are the doors from their master bedroom that look out over onto their farm and their animals and the hill, and there's literally roses everywhere. It was crazy. When we, I mean, I know there's certain times of year where they wouldn't be out as lush as they were when we were there, but when we were there, I was like, what is this coming down? We got there and it was like rose petals. <laughs> I mean, it was just ridiculous. And they literally could sit in these chairs. And the goats like to eat the rose petals. And the roses just came down. Or was it the chickens? No, it was the goats. Or the, and she even gave some of the roses to some of the yeah. animals. I mean, oh, and we also shot them for the dog book. Yeah. This brings us now, we are in New, New Orleans. Orleans to Sarah Ruffin Costello's fabulous house. It's really fun to see a house in magazines over the years or on a blog that's kind of becomes one of those hot houses, you know, just you love it. And then to get to go there in person and see the rooms. And, and I've never once been disappointed. I no. never thought, oh, it looked a little bit better in, in AD. No, oh, no, no. and I'll add an interesting story. So Susanna and I have been incredibly lucky. We've only ever had one person say no to us. Everyone we ask have always said, yeah, sure, sure, come. So then it becomes a matter of scheduling and back and forth and assistance and all that stuff. However, we did have one rejection. <laughs> However, it was, it was a, um, what do you call that, a backhanded compliment. It was Gloria Vanderbilt who we asked if we could film her. And she said no because there was a documentary coming out about her and she was worried there would be a conflict. And then, by the way, did I tell you, I told you this about the Gloria Vanderbilt thing with the power of pattern. No. So then the other day I was home and someone sent me an email. I don't know her that well. She's a friend of a really close friend. And she said, I just want oh, yeah. to let you know that the, your book, The Power of Pattern, I'm at Gloria Vanderbilt's right now for cocktails and your book is on her coffee table. <laughs> and I was like, really? Are you kidding me? And uh, she took a picture of Gloria with the book. That made me so happy. As well as but, <laughs> Now it's been kind of great because at the beginning, we people didn't know about the series, but they knew us, so they said yes. And now people are really excited to be in the series. So we're yeah, um, makes it easier. We're at five million views now. The series has, and we get, we get about shoot our horn. Uh, we get about half a million views a month. So that's been really exciting for us. But back to New Orleans. Look at Sarah's fearless. Um, and that's the biggest compliment. She was compliment one of the I original um, editors of Domino Magazine, the original Domino Magazine. And to me, this, this kind of living room is all about, when I said live with things that you love, every piece, if you ask her about it, there's an, almost an irreverence here that I love. I mean, that huge vintage mirror, that um, lighting fixture is not expensive in any way. She picked that fabric and recovered that, um, that old chair with this sort of, again, irreverent black and white fabric that I love. Uh, the leopard throw on the white sofa. It's just, there's something so wonderfully kind of casual and mm -hmm. familiar about it, but also exotic. And in her uh, former dining room, she put it, made it into a, uh, a ping pong area. So they have three could, young kids. 
she was like, I want to, my kids and their friends to come here and I want them, I want to be able to see them and get to know them, their friends and what they're doing. So she was like, I'm just gonna, and, and it was such a smart idea. So a room that maybe she'd use twice a year, they're in that every All the single time. day. You saw them playing ping pong in the video. In the video. And actually this book, this picture's in my so power. one, by the way. Thank you, but we didn't play <laughs> for that long. I kind of wanted to play longer, it was yeah. fun. But um, I used this in my Power of Pattern book because I loved the way she took a very traditional chintz from Lee Jofa, and she put it, that's the only pattern and piece of furniture in the entire room, and it's sort of grainy chic. It's very old fashioned, but there's something almost kind of modern about it now in the context of a room with a ping pong table in New Orleans. Oh, there's us playing ping pong. Yeah, yeah. She's so great. Tuxedo Park. This is probably one of the most beautiful houses. I always think about this. This is yeah. Michael Bruno, who you know founded who First Dibs. He founded First Dibs, right. And uh, Windsor Smith, who's an amazing Los Angeles architect, um, did it, uh, did the interiors, and we did a video there. I mean, look at his fabulous car. He picked us up. Uh, yeah. Have any of you ever been to Tuxedo Park? Yeah. Yeah, it's so it's you're beautiful. really like out of time there. Mm -hmm. um, and you almost feel like you could be anywhere. Yes. You know? Yep. That's uh, his bathroom. I mean, we just love that. So what was that? Was that wallpaper or is that stuff? Wallpaper. Yeah. Robert Crowder. Scary. Okay, so when we go places, sometimes she'll know because you're so good about um, through your blog and your obviously your passion for textiles and table. She'll know where people's things are from before they do. <laughs> I'll be like, oh my god, Michael. And so she's like, I think that's Robert Crowder. And they're like, yes, that is. Which is very helpful. And uh, it was fun. We went out on his little electric boat. Actually, it didn't work. <laughs> so we thought, oh, it would be fun to end the video with you and I going on their little putt-putt boat out into the lake. And so Stacy had the shot ready to go, and um, it didn't work for some reason. So I think we paddled out. Yeah, you rode. And then Stacy captured it, and, yeah. and we got it back. All right, now we're taking you to Donridge. L.A. In L.A. Have had, you ever heard of... Oh. You, you, got, you go ahead. Tony Duquette. Have you ever heard of Tony Duquette? Okay, so he was... I, I, there are no words for him. I don't even know how to describe. There's him. an was, entire book now on this property. I mean, it's just it, you feel like do you remember what was that famous um, movie where they're in Tibet and they can't leave? What? Yeah, Shangri La. What's the book called? Lost Horizon. That's what this is like. This is like going to Lost Horizon. It's it's like nothing you've ever seen. It's mind-boggling. And so Tony Duquette worked on a lot of movie sets. He was an interior designer. He collected, and he built this kind of Shangri-La house for himself after he passed away. Um, Hutton Wilkinson. Hutton Wilkinson, who worked for him, kind of took it over and throws parties there and kind of almost preserves the property. Mm -hmm. Talk about maximalism. And then Hutton has a house also on the property that's very modern and fabulous. Um, right there too. So, yeah. and they share this incredible garden. And we did a video in Hutton's house. If you want to see it, just uh, I, we can't describe what it's like there. So uh, this it. is, and that's not the old Tony Duquette house. This is where Hutton lives now with his wife and two dogs. We also shot them for the dog book. This very, is yeah. he's obsessed with Venice, so he did mm -hmm. this whole mural. I mean, it's incredible. It's very theatrical. Very theatrical. There's Ruth coming down the steps That's with a her shot dogs. Dog they have two Westies. While we were there, we, or this might have been another time, who can remember? But yep. this is Mark Sykes, who's a wonderful, very talented young interior designer. In LA, and this is his garden. Again, so inspiring. He, this was a flat lot when he got it. He created all those terraces. And of course, when you're in Los Angeles, you put something in the ground and it grows, like, can you imagine how long that would take to do here to grow this? Um, he was like, oh, we just started last year and it's just all covered magically already. But a um, lot of great ideas here, right? Just the, if you had a small backyard area and you really love to look at this, so why not go out this spring and get a bunch of little boxwood and put them in just the purity of the terracotta pots and line them all up? Yeah, he has no flowers. It's all just Yes, green. you're right, yeah. That's, That's the yeah, living inside. room area, mm -hmm. which is so beautiful. He did a really nice job. What I am so struck by is the um, the white, right? The power of a white wall. Sometimes we forget. We think, oh, it has to be a color. Mm -hmm. But this is a very kind of humbly hued mm -hmm. uh, living room with the matting and the browns and the white. A lot white. of nice textures. A lot of nice textures. To me, this is like if you respond to this, maybe... 
you know, think about painting that kind of neither here nor there colored wall a nice fresh white. It just, it makes anything feel possible. And maybe just doing brown with it. I'm kind of obsessed with brown right now. Yeah, and you know, another thing I wanted to say is use these images as visual crutches. Because if you love something, it's so helpful to say to your partner, kids, painter, I, this is what we're doing. I know you think I'm crazy, but look. And it's Mrs. Blandings. Here's the right, thread. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but to see it in context, people say, oh, I get it. I, I understand. But if you try to just say it, let's do white with brown. It sounds like nothing. Right. But right. But when you see it here, you kind of get it. Oh, Alexa. <laughs> Alexa in Manhattan. So Alexa Hampton, you probably, anyone interested in design probably knows Alexa Hampton. Her father was one of the most famous decorators of the 20th century, famous American decorators of the 20th century. Did the Bush's White House? Yeah, right, uh, the he, first did, he, he did the Blair House. Oh, okay. And, um, uh, and Alexa has inherited his legacy and continued on on her own. She's incredibly talented. She's super smart, super sassy. Um, Try to get her for a lot. I mean, you, we, she is. She's a riot. And she knows her stuff. She I really mean, knows her stuff. Every sentence that she says, you just want to pause it and look up things that she says. Incredibly knowledgeable. Incredibly knowledgeable. Her apartment's amazing. Great jib door um, that she um, She put got that the, in, right? Yes, and she got the idea from the Sir John Soane Museum in London. One of her favorite museums that her father took her to. This is the whole thing about stories. Mm -hmm. We were like, how did you, why'd you put jib door in? Well, my father took me to the Stone Museum when I was a little girl. That had a huge influence on me. She bought a series of apartments in a building and put them together. And she this is the jib door to her bedroom. So it's and there's no other to way to get to stair. that bedroom, right? Mm -hmm. Nope. Oh, and then when you're in the bedroom, you see the uh, tram. The tram on the First Avenue it goes literally practically right by her bedroom window. It's a it's, great cityscape. There's That's the bedroom. Her bedroom. Can you believe that? It's really fabulous. Half those things were from Etsy, yep. not fancy, because I asked her about every little thing. See yep. the jib doors? And what's really fun, and it's fun to listen to her tell it on the video, um, that bedroom initially was very beige and very kind of quiet. And she sort of said to her husband, mm, I'm just having a feeling, and we're, it's gonna, the whole thing's going to have to change. I'm sure he's very used to that. <laughs> and uh, she totally tried. I mean, look at the detail. I can't remember what she said about that wall. It's not, is that a, what kind of wall treatment is that yeah, with the lines? It, like, I, it's, it's. Was that stencil or is that a, a no, wallpaper? I no, I think it might be Philip Jeffries. I can't remember. Anyway. But it's a wall covering. And, but, okay. You know, you go ahead. I was going to say, what's very interesting about Alexa is, and, and it has been very interesting to watch her career evolve, is that before I'd ever met her, her design was very, you know, Rigid, I would say. Right, very right, classic, yes. Very rigid. Almost her, clinging a little bit to her father's shadow, a little, playing it safe. But yeah, definitely. Very classic, very, you know. And the first time I met her, I I, I was in shock. She's so, what's that word, ribald, you know. Yeah, she's, she's exuberant and she's, body. She's kind uh, body, of body. Body, yeah. I mean, she's hysterically funny. And her design over the years has definitely become more colorful, more exotic. and. Um, um, so, yeah, we all kind of, and I feel like as a result of being with all these designers and seeing their work, I my own rooms in my own house, I, I'm more fearless. And mm -hmm. I want to push the envelope a little bit because I, I want to see what happens. Remember the funny story she told about the plaster yes. things on the ceiling and her husband was, they were laying it by one and he was like, what, he's Greek, he was like, what are these cabbages or what is this? And she was like, yeah. no, it's actually What's a really it? yeah. serious treatment yeah. though. Yeah. He was like, Plas plaster rosettes. And he yeah. Was and he like, was like, oh, the cabbages. Why do we have cabbages on the ceiling? <laughs> it's also refreshing to know that even top interior designers have these funny conversations with their spouses where they fight about or like argue about uh, what things are. Okay, this was this was a pretty recent video. This is Thomas O'Brien. Talk about a maximal. I mean, the collections that he has. It's funny, a lot of comments. People were obsessed with this video. We got a few comments that were like, this guy's a hoarder. What the? But he wasn't a hoarder. I, I, I had to sort of restrain myself back. I did get mad at one person. I was like, actually, I would categorize a hoarder as someone that doesn't even care what they have. Mm -hmm. They just want the stuff. They don't know what they have, and they just pack rat it. Thomas knew every single thing that he had, and there's... It's, it's uh, mind-boggling. It was crazy, his house. All new, by the way. So he lives on a property in Bellport, Long Island. That's the entry hall. Um, Best art ever. Uh, yeah, incredible. And th that's all new. So he lived... The, his original house, the Academy, was an old house. 
and which is also beautiful. And then he bought the property next door and built this. It's called the library. And it's all new. And it's incredible. And in fact, when we were doing the video, there's a fireplace. You'll see. You have to watch it of how the fireplace <laughs> is so big. It's like bigger. I mean, I, I stood in it. And I was like, so Thomas, I forget. Did you build this fireplace? Or how was this when you got the house? And he was like, um, remember, I built the house. <laughs> so I had... He had sort of enchanted me so much to believe that the house was old that I forgot that yeah. it was just not there before. There's actually a window in the fireplace. Yeah, it's, it's like a gigantic hearth. It's almost too, like he says they use it. <laughs> I don't understand why you would want a fireplace that big. I, I mean, it's like your logs would be. <laughs> just look at the video and you'll see. We're really Tinker not toys. exaggerating. They're like Tinker toys. Oh, another husband and wife team. I'm actually going to okay. be in Nashville so, yeah, okay. next so, week um, with Katie and Peter for the Nashville Antique Show doing a talk with them about their collaboration. They have a whole book just on this house that they built from scratch. This is their weekend retreat. He's a very famous architect. She's an amazing designer. Um, started at a magazine and then went to the other such side. Such a colorist. So I was talking to them yesterday because we were going through the images. Right. And what I love about their collaboration is I, I like to ask them, like, do you each push the, you know, the other a little bit in directions that each of you may not normally do? And so he obviously designed the architecture, the exterior of the house. And it was Katie's idea. And this is so her signature color. Don't you love the inset of the red around the windows? And the door, I mean, that's, the minute you walk up to this house, you're like, this is not an ordinary house. No. And that's what I, I, I really love about it. And we, they're in our dog book, too. Yeah. Now let's see he's if I, no longer with us. Oh, yeah, Teddy just died. Oh, it was cute. When I asked them if, I wanted older dogs, some old dogs in the book, too. And Teddy was almost 14 when I asked. And she was like, I'm sorry we can't be in the book. I think Teddy's just, he's too old. And then she called me three months later. She was like, Teddy's had a resurgence. <laughs> he's Teddy, rally. He's rally. Teddy, I think he can be in your book. He's doing great. We were like, okay. And so while we were taking pictures of her and Teddy, we did a home video. video. Okay, so that uh, that uh, settee there, she found at Christie's upholstered like that. And it's so her. And what I think is so, she, yeah. Go ahead. you know, it's very much, it, it's as though she would have picked that Absolutely. if she hadn't found it. What I think, and I asked them this in the video, I mean, purple ceramic tiles in your entry hall. That's really out of the, it looks so nor, it almost looks like a neutral there. I love it purple so much. Purple is a neutral. Purple is a neutral. <laughs> and I remember saying, I was like, how did you get Peter to agree to that? I mean, not many, uh, that's, and Peter's much it. more classic. And if you see Peter, he's like very serious yes. and very much of an architect, but it works. And I just, I love the foil of the purple tiles with the super traditional mirror. And the sconces. I mean, they're so talented. Yeah, they are really talented. I was thinking the other day, I was like, you know what, if I could just have anyone, I think I would just ask them. them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would maybe pick that whole house. Uh, houses, yeah, and you would live in Gigi's room. And I would live in Gigi's room. Yeah, One of the her. girls has the best, like, bed niche you've ever seen. So now we're in Provincetown. With Ken Falk. Who is a very celebrated decorator, and he does a lot of huge, almost events. Events. Like he the did highest that level super you famous right. wedding in California for, I forget who, who that is. Someone um, from Google or something yeah, like that. Yeah. But um, his house in Provincetown is very, it's not humble at all, but it's cute and cozy. And we did well, a whole It's a very unusual there. house. Um, here he, um, I was going to say about all his artwork that he has. Mm -hmm. It's almost something from another time, mm -hmm. uh, the way that he has decorated. I mean, look at that, look at that sort of sitting area right on the water. You can't put your finger on what kind of design it is or what it alludes to. It just feels like him. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest compliment I could pay to somebody. A lot of the house feels almost like it's crumbling. Um, but everything's like perfect. Oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah. it's kind of crumbling too. Yeah. yeah. And everything is so thoughtful. Very. And that we should. And they have six dogs. <laughs> they have six dogs. And this is what actually gave us the idea for the dog book. I mean, look at the vintage fabric on that mm -hmm. chair and the L.L. Bean toad. And it just, it's all very casual, but just so thoughtful. And every, he loves every piece. But when we were there, I was like, you know what, Cece? All these designers have dogs. Well, it was also the dog video and, that started it. Right. And they love their dogs. And dogs are as much a part of the house as the design. And that's kind of what gave us the inspiration. But we couldn't, he was not included in the book because he lives in San Francisco. If you can believe it, he flies from San Francisco 
to Provincetown, Massachusetts, a as lot. much as he can, a lot, as much as he can, because he loves it so much. Huge commitment there. Oh, and there's the cover of the dog book. Um, okay, so this is Robert Couturier, who's an architect and a designer, but known as a designer, right. who lives near Susanna up in Litchfield County. And this was funny when we went on, and he is beyond devoted to his dogs. He has five Shih Tzus. Yep, many of them are rescues. This yep. is the library. So he has a freestanding library that he's created in their house. We've done a video there. We did two videos with him at home and in the library. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And um, just before we went there, um, he said uh, Veranda had been there shooting for a Christmas issue. And he was like, they were here for three days. Three days. Because you know three when you shoot days. for a magazine, obviously it, it looks amazing and you have to have it. But they set up a computer, a whole thing like this, and you've got your photographer and you're shooting every shot. And then you go, there's a delay. And then everyone looks at the <laughs> shot. And then they go back. I mean, it's just, it's a huge process. So ours, and it's fun. We had never, I, I sort of forced Stacy to do the photography for the book. She yeah. was like, I can't shoot photos for a Rizzoli book. I'm like, yes, you can. You're going to do it. Because I knew we were at these houses all the time anyway. So it really went well. I mean, we didn't, all the dogs, most of the dogs were so well behaved that it was really, it was like shooting people. Um, we had a couple we had one or two. Kelly was, Whistler's dog. Kelly Whistler's dog. Oh, and it was funny. In London, we had a, I had that naughty pug. <laughs> that was hysterical. Oh, maybe later I'll show you the video. It was. Um, so I was yeah. wearing black, shiny rubber, you know, like rain boots because I was thinking it was going to rain every day, which it never did. We had every day was, was sunny in London. Gorgeous. It was crazy. So this, this designer had a black, uh, pug. a little black pug. And I've never had this happen. I was like, what is on my leg? <laughs> And Stacy, because Stacy takes some pictures with the dogs and some with the dog and some just interior, so it's a mix. Because you can't have a dog in every single shot. And I was like, "What is this?" And I looked down, and it was the pug. I think he thought like, that my black boot on the back of her was boot. another pug because it was shiny, like a pat. And it was seeing its reflection. And I was like, "We really." I have actually a have a video. I have a video of it. We can so show. then I had to take off my boots to be barefoot so that the dog would like leave so we can take it. But anyway, this ended up being the cover. Um, you just have to be ready for the moment, right? Like we did put them there, but we just didn't know, you know, how it would look. There's actually three Shih Tzus there, but it looks like two, but one is kind of buried. Yeah. There's Mary McDonald with her five pugs. In LA, I did, not, I did not take this shot. I wanted this to be the cover because the cover is dogs and their designers. I kind of thought with Rizzoli on this, they were like, nope, we want this one. Um, I really thought, and, and I'm fighting for the UK one to have a designer and the dog on the cover because I think it just that's what makes it more special. But I mean, how amazing is this picture? And this just says it says it all. So this was our recent trip to London. What for the dog book? And this uh, was our first shoot. This is our first shoot in Norfolk, which is northeast. And we spent the night here. That was really fun. That, it's really fun to spend. The, we never met this We've man. We never met him. We were Insta friends. We were like, but then we felt instantly. Yeah, we yeah. were like, blah, blah, blah. I mean, yeah, it was crazy. It was so much fun. But all of a sudden, you know, we drove there. You're jet lagged. I'm driving. Susanna She's my drove. GPS for a week. Do you know how many roundabouts we did? Like On maybe a hundred. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll come back if you'll have us, and we'll do a fun presentation about the dogs in the UK, and you'll see all it the was country houses. Driving. So I'm sure many of you have driven in England, but it is crazy. So this was our first house. You don't know what to expect. It was like planning a wedding overseas. You know, all this itinerary. I'm like, I don't know where I'm going. Stow of the world of the blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Pull up to the garden gate. There's a cowbell. Ring that. Come in. And uh, it was very symbolic and cute. The dogs were waiting. And he had a little rescue dog that um, his and partner's mother had mm -hmm. given to them because she was very sick. And I remember we pulled in. And I opened the door to sort of say hi. And the dog, the little dog, Alfred, jumped right in my lap. And he just sat on my lap as I pulled in. And I was like, it's going to be OK. <laughs> like, I just felt like, here we go. Because it's a, you, got, you have a week there. And if anyone cancels or there's rain, they are not gonna be, they're not going to be able to be in the book because of deadlines. There's the naughty black pug, Dahlia. <laughs> Follow this blog. This is um, Emma Burns. She's an amazing designer that used to, is that Colfax and Fowler? She's the head of design at Colfax and Fowler. She was quintessential. I mean, she was so great. She was fantastic. I mean, look at that. I mean, but I on think, Instagram, she's called Violet Burns. Violet Burns. I bet you Rizzoli's going to want that for the cover, right? Don't you think? They're going to pick that. I mean, we don't know about the next eight that we're going to do in May, but that's kind of a potential cover shot. But there's no human in it. I think there should be. 
Okay, so this is Paolo Moschino. He's a British designer. And this is his London flat where we did a... At um, home with video. At home with video. But um, we shot his country house with a dog book. Jock, who I forgot is in that picture. Yeah. He was not the best... I didn't love him so much. He was naughty. He was very naughty. Yeah. New, new, new dog. New dog. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't like... I he just, was a puppy. He was just mm, yeah. not a favorite. Cone of silence. Yeah, serious cone of silence. I feel horrible that we said that. I know. Oh, and we're being recorded. Uh oh, we'll have to edit that out. Are we being recorded? I think so. Oh, oh dear. Okay. That cannot be public knowledge. Um, land guard. Okay, so I mean, forget this house. This is the. This is. I still. This house haunts me in the best way. When I posted um, this on Instagram, I said, "It's like a modern Manderley." All of you who've seen Rebecca, that's what this house is like. Um, this is a woman who she and her husband bought, uh, sort of saved this house. It's, um, I forget the year of it, but it's been through a fire. I mean, it's a very, very old estate. And her business partner, who lives in London, comes each day to the house. Their studio is They're above gardeners. this living room. They're gardeners. So they deliver dahlias, organic, fresh cut flowers to everywhere in London. Um, but that's only part of their business. And they design gardens. I mean, they're incredible. But this house, I mean, so when we got there everywhere. Did I do I, Oh no, no, I didn't add out the shot. Dahlia's every, I mean, just, it was, it was beyond. It was so incredible. That was the most special day. And they were like, why don't you two stay? We have an appointment with like our compost expert. If you guys want to stay here for a little bit and just sit here and enjoy the house, you know, before you head up, why don't you? And they left. And for a second, I was like, we just, we were in heaven. We were like, can you imagine if you lived here? I it mean, was, just, it was truly incredible. It was when you think of an English country house, Shabby furniture that was kind of pink silk pillows and a little bit of stuffing coming out and an old Wedgwood vase with fresh dahlias from the morning, um, portraits, amazing books. I mean, just and a You're kind just of, worried about Mrs. Danvers. <laughs> what? Never mind. Oh, okay. Oh, from Rebecca. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that would that was pretty incredible. We never what we never yeah, went and to that leave. Actually, is their obsession? I forgot about that. Um, is uh, their new obsession is soil health? I said soil health. Soil right? health? But also the topiaries, they had these hedges and on top, um, these boxwood hedges and on top of them are, were animal shapes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was incredible. This is a great, remember when we said we were at Carolyn Rome's and she was bringing out her dresses from um, storage that she had and we were tying it into her love of design. I, I saw this purple one, of course she still fit into it, right? Yeah. And I was like, can you just, cause you're always thinking, what's the ending? Mm -hmm. We were like, can you just go try that on and come out? So she comes out barefoot and her dogs are kind of yapping around her and she ran down this alley of trees. Beautiful. I mean, and I was like, see, so she's just like, yep. That again. <laughs> I'm like, uh. Yeah, there were no words. There were no words. So that's the end. We that's hope it. that you are all inspired and we hope, thank you. Obviously, if you follow Quintessence blog, you, the videos will get delivered to you when she does a post of them. But, but another can, easy way, just go to YouTube and put in Quintessence, and you can just hit the subscribe button. And then you'll get a video every time we... Every time we do it, you'll just get it, get it delivered. And we'd love you all to follow the series. And, we have and a lot of fun ones coming up. Lot. Well, yeah, we have a lot of great ones coming up. And um, if there, I don't know if you guys want us to, to open it up for questions. Yeah, or we're happy to, if anybody to has any after. questions. I, know I don't want to over Sarah. Welcome. Yes. Back. Mm, that's a good question. I yeah. don't know. Sort of, well, we kind of go, I would say once a month we have something, whether it's in Connecticut at a new designer's house or we're going to LA or we're going to France. We didn't do anything this month. We didn't do anything this month. Yeah, it kind of comes and goes. We sort of are always. And we try and group them. So like when we go to LA next time, we'll try and shoot four. three. Yeah, oh, three or four. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but then we're already planning, like we, we don't want to miss the, um, Deco off in Paris next year. So we're thinking, let's go to Deco off, and then who can we hit up when we're there? We've always wanted to do Carolina Irving's apartment in Paris, but if you ask too far ahead, they can't commit. But that, you know, it's like you it have gets to, complicated. The you scheduling have to always be. We want to go to the Bahamas to do Amanda Linroth's. Well, we actually are probably doing that in March. Right. Uh, that's really close. I know. Like, we have to I like. Have book, to. I know some people are like, oh, I would love that. It's like, well, someone has to get on the phone. And we have to book the tickets. I mean, yeah. It's like you almost have to will it into being. You almost have to just say, we're doing it. And it's amazing how many things we do get. We're like, have you seen this house? She's like, yep, let's just ask them. And then you just, so we're always trying to go to places to get content 
as much right. as we can without it being crazy. Not for every video. I don't take sponsors on the blog because I try and keep the editorial content pure, but we do take sponsors for the video series, and we've had everybody from small designers to Schumacher and Ballard Design. And, and we make the ad for them. So we, we make the ad. Idea. We were like, you know we're like a little ad agency, too. We do right. it all. Right. So people give us their images. We write the little text. It's 30 seconds. And then the ad lives forever, forever paired with the visit. So it's great for them. And it's really fun for places that may not be able to afford print advertising or $50,000 at an AD. I mean, to me, this is like a much bigger bang for their buck because it goes on and on and on. It's not right. someone doesn't throw it away. And so. some of we have about, I'd say, 15 videos that each have over 100,000 views. Right. So we have done the sponsors, and that's our goal to have everyone sponsored. But like the other day, we saw the John Darian house in AD, and I was like, John, can, can we come film? Can we, we want to come film. And then I was emailing Stacy at the same time with her PR person. I was like, it's okay if we don't get a sponsor for this. Like, we don't care. Yeah. We will just go and just, so we don't always have to have one. Right. The only person is Gloria Vanderbilt. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. We have a few we're still waiting to hear on, but they haven't said no yet. <laughs> you know, it's again, you have to sort of play it right. I mean, at this point, luckily, most designers, you know, there was one designer, <clears throat> Jeffrey Bill Huber, who's an amazing, I mean, house, I mean major A-list. Major A-list. His house you saw for a second has that incredible green living room. It's in and, Locust Valley. Um, it's not that I was intimidated. You know, of course, the ones we went to in the beginning were ones that we knew really well or we, that we knew knew us, so we didn't really know him at all. And I saw his house, and I was like, Stacey, you know, what about Jeffrey Bill Huber? I was a little, I don't know. I just, he got right on the phone. I was, they were like, Jeffrey Bill Huber's office. I was like, oh, this is it. Jeffrey was right. He was like, are you kidding me? Like, he was so excited. Yeah, he, he was, was like, I a, love the series. I, yeah, so I'd that be honored. Really we good. were like, so, wow, okay. But there's some people that it does take long just logistically. These, mm -hmm. got, these designers travel so much. They are literally in Dubois for a client. Then they come back and they do the Nashville Antique Show. And then they're in New York. So you have to um, yeah, so hope we're, that we're, it's serendipitous when yeah. you're there, when they're there. And then they usually, like Suzanne Reinstein in LA, we've been trying to get her for years now. And finally, she is going to be there when we're there. So and it's also because she gave trying. up the store. So what? that makes, it's also because she gave up the right. store. So that makes her a little so more. So some, you just have to keep trying. We're getting Martin Lawrence Ballard. That's a scheduling, that? that's a scheduling. Right, so he's like all set for that week, but El Decor is shooting my new house that week too. We're like, really? Uh. So, but we don't want to lose it. So we have to sort of So wait we have wait, wait. we're waiting to hear from him before we book our tickets. You know, it's in that case kind we have of to thing. stay an extra day. It's the kind of thing that if it was a really big TV show, there would be three people doing worrying about that. Yeah, we do everything. So, um, but it makes it, you know, easier too sometimes just to do it yourself as yeah. well. I mean, look, it's not the worst part. It's, I'm not trying to make it sound like it's a chore. We love it, but it's it is a lot of that back and forth sleuthing. So um, her name is Haley Sarno, and I found her on Instagram. <laughs> and um, that took a while to get done because she had to work with an animator. And whose was she doing that inspired you to reach out to her? Because I remember you were like immediately, we said we had to have a beginning. And you were yeah, like, and, I, and I, wanted, I didn't want to do, I wanted to do an illustration. And um, I used to be an art director. I don't know if you know that. So, um, I can't remember. And it was cute. Yeah, you were just like, I know the perfect person. And she did yeah. it pretty fast. I mean, it was. Yeah, there was some back and forth, like, you know. Then we had to do the music, the first music. So she we did got one with a car time. and she did one with an airplane. So for our close videos, it's the car. And it was and cute. For she made LA it look like Europe, us. It's the airplane. It was cute. She, it's cute. She did say, I mean, it, it, she captured, I think, it really well. And it was yeah. fun. Um, so, and then we had the music. We had a, another music that we got, but we realized we didn't have the rights to that. So then we didn't want to give it up, but then we ended up getting yeah, right so the now music we, we use now. So now we own this. But yeah, to do all those elements, you're listening to thousands and thousands of little, what kind of music will be upbeat, but not distracting, that won't annoy people, you know? And a lot of people say like, what's the music? Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's all those little bits, and once you have them in place, and then there's all the social media component of it. Once you have it, how do you get it out to people? People forget, you know, you can't, assume that people wake up and go, I wonder if there's a quintessence video. <laughs> Do you guys wake up and go, I'm going to go look on that blog? No, you have to like, you know, get in front of people and remind them. And 
it gets easier as you go because YouTube now is sort of helping us <coughs> because we, we have a popular series. They push it out to people on YouTube who have expressed interest in design. And but there's a marketing element of it too that but we, has to be yeah. that's really important. And we know other places that do some videos a little bit different than we do. And it's so hard to find the videos. I keep wanting to say to them, you guys are spending so much money and time on a series that I'm telling you, you've lost people. If you don't make it easy for people, they mm -hmm. will not do it. I mean, most people, understandably, are, they'll maybe do one click. They're going to do three clicks. I mean, probably not. One thing I want to say is kind of like to encourage everybody here. I've been so lucky, you know, to find Stacy, And I think we all think that whatever we do, it has to be us. And, you know, if we're, if we're freelancing or not working at an office, it's we take the burden upon ourselves to, like, do what we love and kind of find our way in the world. But if you find someone that has the same work ethic as you do, you can complete, be completely different. It's really a joy, and it, you can get so much done with another, you know, two forces are greater than one, so to speak. So And we have fun. And we have fun. And so it becomes a friendship of, of, of interest, and I think uh, we tend to underestimate joining with somebody else. It doesn't have, we don't even have a contract with each other. It's not about <laughs> an official business. But it's like, if you want to do something and you know how to do X and you know that this person knows how to do Y and what, you know, and you share something in common, why not try to work together on it? And the best thing is that you don't have to, there's no more sort of three people in the world that call the shots editorially, right? You can do your own YouTube channel. You can get an Instagram account and you can push it out and mm -hmm. you do your marketing and you can be in charge. You don't have to just wait around for someone to deem that your thing is worthwhile and it's amazing what people will how people will be inspired by your energy and and come on board you know yes a little bit we've had that yes. we, we've definitely had From that the PR people too. and part of the problem is partly because they're lesser and we don't know that people will be interested but also we don't know them and we don't know what they're going to be like on camera <laughs> but it's a comedy and and then you know we have to judge what we think our viewers are going to like, you know, as well as... That's, it, that's right. where it gets tricky and you don't... It's hard. And I will say, though, some of the ones that we think are going to be the knockout of the ballpark, super famous names, we won't say names, but we think, oh my God, everyone's going to watch this in two seconds. It's been fun. <laughs> now we're getting like 10,000 views overnight when we launch a video. In the old days, it was like, oh, we got 500 views. <laughs> now it's like, it's not a 10,000 yet and it's the next morning. But... Um, Sometimes those big names that you think are going to be the slam dunks aren't necessarily the ones that take off right away. They end up getting views. We had this woman, Lulu Powers, who's in L.A. You see her quickly in the video. No one's ever heard of her, right? Lulu Powers. Some people? Okay. But, I mean, she's not as recognizable a name as, say, Carolyn Rowe. So we did her house uh, in L.A., and she <laughs> forgot that we were coming, actually. Uh, it was, I can't even tell you, it was, it was so one of the funniest things that ever happened. And I was like, this video is going to be a disaster. She was great, but it was sort of very crazy because she's a caterer, so we talked a lot about entertaining outside, and she had these ice cubes with flowers. In she's them. got the food column in House Beautiful. Yeah. So I'm not saying that she's a nobody. I'm not saying No, that, but she's but not. She yeah. doesn't have that kind of name marquee value that you might get in someone else. So we just didn't really know what we had, and we cobbled it together, and we put it out there. Oh, my God. Everyone it went was crazy. Obsessed with her, they loved the video. Um, perhaps it was because it was sort of casual and fun, and they felt like they were with girlfriends. So sometimes the people that you don't know of that well are kind of the ones that somehow everyone loves more than the the big names. Yeah. We had one, by the way, that we were like, "Oh my God, everyone's going to love this. He's so handsome. The house is so great. He he is a huge fop." And it was like it just didn't do that well. Yeah. I don't understand it. I'm it's like, like what, what happened? And then ones that we don't, you never know. There's never, you yeah. can't overthink it too much either, right? Okay, so what was your question? Oh, uh, gray is on its, I mean, the big trend now is like maximalism and color and pattern. and. But I would also say that I hate the word trend. And if yeah, anyone well, me ever asked me, like, can you give a quote about trends? I was like, I, I don't want to speak about trends because none of these designers care about trends. Right. Not one of them. Right. They really don't. It's sort of an awful word right, that a lot of companies start to get people to think that they have to change things out. It's like and, the color of the year. Yeah, exactly. It's like really what it's about is living with what you love, and that will be timeless. We have a question over here, Suzanne. 
Well, Timothy got a whole new chateau. So they, um, the, quest, the question <laughs> so was how often, how often are designers redoing their own homes? Quite some, yes, some. Well, yeah. and Robert, Robert Couturier, this is interesting. His house is sort of considered paradise and he loves it so much. He lives right near me. All of a sudden the other day on Instagram, he was like, selling the house. Mm -hmm. Moving, moving on away to another town, wanting to start over. And I said, you know what? I really admire you, Robert. You work so hard on this house. Most people would just be content to just keep it the way it is. And you'll find that most designers are always not maniacally. So they appreciate what refreshing. They have. They're always thinking they're not afraid of change. They um, they want to try new things. They're not stuck. And but it may not be a total overhaul. And I think it's, you know why? A lot of them, they love the journey. They love the process. Mm -hmm. It's fun for them. That's like they, Timothy with the Chateau. Yeah, exactly. Like he loves it. Or they just, they want to try something new. They're never too stagnant. And I would, everyone, I, you know, you're going to laugh when I say this, but I always say, if your room is the same way after five years, even change one little thing, change the paint color, change your rug, move a picture frame, move a painting. You'll see when you do that, everything's in a wonderful way. It just brings some fresh air in and maybe it will inspire you to do something else. It's amazing. You're like, you know what? This has been the same way for, oh, you know, change it up. Why not? It doesn't mean that you have to call a, a contractor. It might just mean going online and finding a new rug or a pillow. Yeah. You want to, uh, so... Um asking, since we're in all these beautiful homes, what our own houses look like? <laughs> it's hard, I have to s Okay. Um, Do you mean classical? Because a lot of them are very, I would say most of them are very maximalist. Like they have a lot of amazing artwork and collections and color and pattern. I don't think we've ever done any that are sort of modern white boxes, so to speak. They're all right. very decorated. I have to say it is hard. It is hard sometimes to go home. <laughs> to go home. I mean, we both were, you know, we love designing ourselves and we love our homes very, very much. And every single thing in my house, I love and I love designing it. It's hard sometimes to drive home after being in some of these places. And but, but interestingly, whenever we do one of these videos and I go home, I'm looking at my house with a fresh eye. Yes, exactly. So you're and I'm saying, oh, wow, when maybe I should do something like that. You know, I'm always... And like your whole wallpapering thing that we... Oh, yeah, I went on a little wallpapering extravaganza last year. And again, like for her, it, she's not going to... You wouldn't have the budget or maybe want to put in a new wallpaper that you've seen in Alex Papa Christie's bedroom of the San Rafael San, by Sandberg. I actually did use that wallpaper. Yes, <laughs> I know. But what I was saying is that but you did it in your laundry room. Yeah. So it's taking what you see on a bigger level and saying, I want to now have that pattern that I loved in Alex's, and, she, and her laundry look, looks incredible. Yeah, I did it in my mud room and my laundry room, and I did it because of the trees. Right, that you it felt like that. you know. So anyway. they always inspire us in our homes, and it's fun. We'll come back and we'll say, like I just did a living room edition, and I said, you know what? I've been seeing in a lot of these designer homes mirrors over the fireplace. In my other house, I had a a, a wonderful modern painting over the fireplace. And somehow being at the Land Gardeners, the house that looked like Rebecca and the, you know, with the dahlias and the English countryside, I found that my living room edition that I just did is so influenced by our recent trip to, to England, I can't even tell you. It's like I went to um, vintage places and got like an old Wedgwood vase and I was putting branches in it and the <laughs> mirror. I mean, I really, that I would not have done that room. It doesn't look old English, but I can just see the influences all over the mm -hmm. place. I wouldn't have done it a year ago that way at all. I would have done it differently. So always keep yourself open to new possibilities. New possibilities. Sure, as and long thank as you all so thank much. you very much. <laughs> yeah, you, you have some business. Sorry if we talk too long. We no. tend to get <laughs> no. over exuberant about what we're doing. I just wanted to thank everybody for coming tonight. Um, we had a wonderful evening. Stacy and Susanna, um, thank you for sharing your inspiration, uh, your insights, and the glimpses into all these homes of the tastemakers. We love to follow. 
Um, I also want to thank Pat and Marianne for their tasteful guidance in getting this program started for the library, and to Abby for her computer help, yes, Amanda yeah. so for all the publicity she did, um, support from so many people at the Darien Library to have the evening happen. Stacy, Susanna, thank you so, so much for an incredible evening. Thank you. Thank you.